Hello everybody, you're welcome back again to the Reggae Appreciation Society. As the 1980s were ending and the 1990s were unfolding, Dancehall was reaching its creative peak with an endless stream of super talented DJs who emerged and lit up Jamaica's music scene with a sound that reverberated around the planet. A dazzling epoch when legendary sound systems were in their prime and festivals like Sting and Rebel Salute were coming into their own. But while Jamaica had been the epicenter of the cultural tidal wave, the children of Jamaican immigrants in the diaspora had been nurturing vibrant reggae hubs in the UK, Canada and the US since the 1970s. Places like New York with a strong Jamaican community spawned thriving sound systems and dance hall movements with legit superstars of their own. Out of that scene came the original Don Dada that the world came to know as Louis Rankin. Straight out of Ontario, Canada, by way of St. Thomas, Jamaica, the effervescent, fire-spitting DJ burst out from the American underground dance hall scene where he had ruled almost undisputed with one of the most iconic dance hall anthems of the 1990s. At the peak of his powers, he was just as legit and lethal as Supercat or Ninja Man. And those two legends would find out how dangerous he was in future clashes. This diminutive dynamo's personality and charisma ensured that his exploits weren't limited to music as he would be cast in movies which have since become iconic and classic material. Let's take a look at the awesome story of Louis Rankin. This icon story began in 1953 in St. Thomas Parish in Jamaica where he was born as ordinary Leonard Ford and grew up in the tough neighborhood of Rockfort in Kingston. As a young child, his love for entertainment was clear to his family and by the age of nine, he had started performing in school, singing at Christmas presentations and generally performing anywhere he could find an audience. He was endowed with a magnetic personality and anytime he would start DJing or singing in his school playground, a crowd would gather around him in a flash. He kept this up until the age of 14 when his talent and enthusiasm would meet a great opportunity. A sound system owned by reggae producer Jack Ruby came to his neighborhood to throw a dance and young Leonard, though too young to attend, found his way in and joined the party. His enthusiasm and energy caught the eye of the sound system selector named King Stitch who decided to give the lad a chance on the microphone. He was really tiny so the selector had to stack a few beer crates and place him on top of it. And when he started blazing the mic, the audience went wild with excitement. Maybe a bit too excited as they got so rowdy that the police came in and shut down the show. That debut was so encouraging that he made up his mind that he would become a DJ and hustled his way into as many sound system events as he could find. But before he could really make impact in Jamaica, his parents got immigrant visas to Canada sometime around 1970 and the entire Ford family left the island. They settled in Toronto in a neighborhood called Eglinton West or Little Jamaica, an area which had a vibrant Jamaican community which had been thriving since the 1950s. These immigrants, like young Louis Rankin, would be responsible for importing reggae culture into Canada and inspiring the likes of eventual dance hall stars like Daniel O'Brien aka Snow by the early 1990s, just like their Jamaican counterparts had done in the UK and in the US. Louis Rankin would form part of the foundational crew that created the reggae dance hall scene in Canada in the 1970s, which would later produce Toronto 80s DJs like Devon Irie, Bobby Zaro, and Stamarax. By the end of the 1970s, New York could boast of the most vibrant dance hall and sound system scene on the American continent, and Louis Rankin was always in the Big Apple due to the heavy demand by sound system owners and show promoters. As the 80s unfolded, New York became his second home and would be the place where he would become a recording artist, courtesy of one of the most dangerous men in America in the person of Vivian Blake. Blake was at the time the leader of the American branch of the international crime organization called the Jamaican Shower Posse. In an attempt to establish a legitimate business, he founded a music label which he would call Claypot Records to put out reggae music from US-based Jamaican artists. It was this label that would release Louis Rankin's first single, Up and Down, in 1983. For the rest of the 80s, Louis Rankin continued his sizzling form on the sound system circuit that was exploding in popularity across America, playing countless venues and shows alongside plenty of Jamaican DJs like Supercats, Nitty Gritty and Nicodemus who had all but relocated to the US. He was the favorite DJ of choice for sound systems like Addis, 
Downbeats, and Africa Love Sound System, along with fellow toaster Shinehead. Due to Louis Rankin not being based in Jamaica, his pedigree as a battling DJ is terribly underrated. He would roast and defeat the likes of Supercat and Ninja Man in several sound clashes. He wasn't really focused on recording his music until later on when he began to put out singles like Proud Are We and Boy George in 1988. But in 1991, he would write and record a song that would catapult him from underground legend to global superstar. That year, he suddenly got inspired to do a song based on political violence which he had witnessed in his old neighborhood of Rockfort during a visit to Jamaica in the late 1970s. A gunman in the ghetto had opened fire on a police helicopter with a gun so powerful that the chopper had to make an emergency landing. The government began to inquire into the nature of the weapon used when a PNP strongman named George Flash said that the gun used was a typewriter due to the peculiar sound that it made and Louis Rankin wrote a song inspired by that term and went to record it at a studio in New York owned by a popular Jamaican producer Philip Smart with the instinctive feeling that it would become a smash hit. It was released under a small label called Shelley's Records owned by a record store owner Biotica Avenue in New York and upon release it literally set the streets, nightclubs, sound systems and house parties ablaze. It was such a hit that within a few weeks, he was approached and signed to Mesa Records, a subsidiary of the Warner record label. It was under Mesa that he released his debut album, Showdown, in 1992. Describing Typewriter as a hit song is a huge understatement and disservice. The song was an absolute monster that overran New York before taking the whole world by storm. From Jamaica to Japan, from Ghana to Germany, it was everywhere filling up dance floors and a fixture on everyone's mixtape. He followed up his debut album with his second titled The Little Weapon in 1993, but it didn't do as well as his predecessor. After featuring on a song titled One Love with Black Uhuru in the same year, he slowed down on recording and resumed his busy schedule as an artist on the concert circuit. He was in extremely high demand for his electrifying live shows, his glittering image and rude boy persona. It was this factor that would lead him into acting before the end of the 90s. One Saturday night, sometime in 1997, after performing at a nightclub in New York, he was approached by popular music video director Hype Williams to play the role of a character that was supposed to be like the Black Scarface in a film that he was about to make. He was stunned but eventually agreed to take the part in the movie. This movie named Belly also featured hip-hop superstars like DMX, Nas and Method Man. The movie became a cult classic and Louis Rankin's character, a Jamaican drug lord, Lame Lennox or Ox, is among the most memorable from that flick after his release in 1998. In 2002, Louis Rankin returned to the big screen, this time for the movie Shutters, where he also played a crime boss named Teddy Brockshot alongside Kimani Mali and Wyclef Jean. His roles in these movies were so iconic that younger generations knew him simply as the actor who had played Ox and Teddy Brockshot. He continued into the 2000s doing what he loved doing best, playing shows, featuring on different artists songs and taking movie roles every now and then, like the 2018 movie The Intent Part 2. In 2019, he was working on his third album titled The Return of the Don Dada and had finished putting together all the songs including tracks featuring Snoop Dogg and Sizzler. On 28th of September, he announced on Instagram that his new album was about to drop. But sadly, Louis Rankin would pass away two days later while driving home on the 30th of September 2019 in a car accident. It was a tragedy that shocked his fans, family, colleagues and the entire international dancehall community. It's been four years since the passing of this great icon but he lives on in our hearts, the movies, and certainly the music that made Louis Rankin the dancehall legend that the world will never forget. Rest in peace, original Don Dada. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe, and until next time, Jobless.